Hey guys. In this video, we will create repeating background. In the previous video, we have set up spawn random grounds. Now, grounds are randomly spawning. But there is currently only one background. We will make this background repeat forever. So, now I am going to duplicate the background game object by pressing Ctrl D. The duplicated game object called BG1 is currently placed on top of the main background game object. Now, I am going to move it at the right side. We will place it next to the old background image, so that we get two backgrounds alongside. So, I am going to write 24 to the X position. Because, I already know the image width is 2400 pixels which means 24 units. So, now we can see there is no space between them. Now, inside the hierarchy, I am going to drag the duplicated object and then drop it on the old background game object. Now, the BG1 is a child of the BG game object. So now if we move the main background game object, then the child object BG1 will also move along with the main background game object. So, now I am going to tell you how we will make the repeating background. I will also keep another option while making the repeating background which is parallax effect. It means, when the player runs, the player overpasses the background and the ground, so we can see the background and ground are going back, as the player is running. But, it doesn't give the realistic feel, as the background is a remote object. The background should move back a bit slowly compared to the ground and the player. And this matter is called parallax effect. Now, we will know how we can make repeating background. Currently, the camera is moving along with the player. When the camera will move and reach to the end of the background game object, immediately the background game object will move 24 units forward. Because, 24 units or 2400 pixel is the width of the background image. So, the whole background including its child will give us a full repeating background feel. If you don't understand what I am trying to mean. Don't worry, you will understand everything very clearly once we've done it. So, I am going to go ahead and create a C-sharp script called repeating background. I am going to open it in Visual Studio. Now, we will create a game object type variable called camera, as the background will repeat based on the camera movement, so we must need the camera. Now, we will create a flow type variable called parallax effect. Flow type variables can store number that contains decimal. Now, we will create two more flow type variables called width and position x. The width will have the width size of the background image. And the position X will have the current position of the background game object. So, now I am going to set value for the width variable inside of the start function. So I am going to write get component. And then sprite renderer.bounce.size.x. This will give the X size or the horizontal size of the background image to the width variable. Now, we will set the position X value which is going to be transform.position.x. Now, inside the update function, we will make a float variable called parallax distance. Before setting value for this variable, I am going to tell how we will make the parallax effect. 
First, what if we don't have the parallax effect? Without parallax effect the player will be surpassing the ground and the background at the same time. But, we want to make a feel like the background is a remote object, so the player will surpass the background slowly. So, with the parallax effect, the background should move a little bit slowly along with the player, so it will make us feel like the background is far away, so the player is surpassing it slowly. However, I am going to write camera's exposition. Then we will multiply with the parallax effect variable. Now, we will make another variable called remaining distance. Here we will multiply the camera's exposition with 1 minus parallax effect. Here, the parallax distance means how far the background should move because of the parallax effect. And the remaining distance means how far the camera will have to go in order to go beyond the background image. However, I am going to attach the repeating background script to the background game object. Now, I will go back to the Visual Studio. We will now make the background image move because of the parallax effect. So, transform.position is equal to new vector 3. For the x value, we will write the position x variable and then we will add the parallax distance variable. So, the background will move for the parallax effect. Now, for the y and z position, I am going to pass its current position. The last thing we have to do is the most important thing which is, we will make the background repeat. So, I am going to write an if condition. The condition is going to be if the remaining distance is greater than position x plus width. Then the position x variable will be added to the width variable. So as a result, this will move the background to a distance equal to its width. Now, I am going to save the script by pressing Ctrl S, and then go back to the Unity. Now, we will attach the camera to the repeating background script. Then we will set the parallax effect value. This value will be between 0 to 1. If we set the value 0, that will not make any parallax effect. And if we put the value 1, that will make the background move along with the player with same speed. So, we will put a value like 0.3 or 0.4. I am going to set 0.4. Now, we will play the game to see if it's working. Okay, everything is fine. Now, if you don't understand this video, please watch it again. If you understand it lately, that would be more effective. Or alternatively, I'd recommend another video that I found on YouTube. That video is by Danny, an awesome game developer. If you search on YouTube by Danny repeating background, you will get the video. Hopefully, you will like his teaching style. However this is it for this video, and we will add some obstacles to the game in the next video.